been a little cr trying the past few days. Uh, first, I need to I want to apologize for that uh, live stream we were doing last week where it cut off completely. YouTube took it down because of some somebody flagged it for a copyright. I only got a warning, but I still got to stare at it every time I log in. It's taken me a few days to work up the energy to get back into it because that that really pissed me off. My HDMI capture card craps out on me. So I have ordered a new one on should be coming in a few days. Thank you patrons. I'm going to do this on my laptop camera. It looks okay, right? Okay, on with the show. I already did director Stuart Gordon's horror classic From Beyond. I should have done this one first, but I didn't have a copy of it yet. From Beyond reunited many faces from this movie, also starring Jeffrey Combs and Gallons of Goo. At the time, Hollywood still wasn't afraid of blood and boobs. Horror was designed to appeal to adults. Gore, profanity, nudity, not meant to be watched with the kids. This is Lovecraft and Chill. This is Reanimator. We open at the University of Zurich Institute of Medicine in Switzerland. Good old ZU. There are some weird things going on inside the office of Dr. Gruber. Ugh, are we gonna need to call HR for this? Wow, she's good. Great gun discipline there, Chief. He got into my heroin. My heroin. This is Herbert West, played by the incredible, edible Jeffrey Combs. He was trying to help Dr. Gruber, I guess, but this image isn't helping. See, he's better already. That's... that's normal. But West is blamed. You killed him! No, I did not. I gave him life. <laughs> yeah, for like a minute. Meanwhile, a good old miskatonic you, medical student Dan Kane loses yet another patient. He's a fighter, refusing to give up on an already dead patient when doctors are ready to call it quits. She's gone! Don't worry, this only counts for 10% of your grade. You just have to put this behind you. Now wheel her dead corpse out of here. Part of his duties are taking bodies to the morgue. <laughs> it, looks, it looks like the hall monitor lost his office and said, fuck it, I'm gonna sit right here. Gordon Ramsay would hate this place. Everything's raw! And that's how you get the last drop of ketchup out. This is the dean of the medical school, Mr. Halsey, played by Robert Sampson, introducing a new student. Oh shit, it's this guy again. David Gale is Dr. Carl Hill. He's kind of a big deal here. According to IMDb, this role was written originally for Christopher Lee. They came close, right? Check out Sheldon Cooper over here. He does not like Dr. Hill, and he lets him know it. I know your work, Dr. Hill, quite well, though derivative of Dr. Gruber's research in the early 70s. So derivative, in fact, that in Europe it's considered plagiarized. <laughs> you know, I used to have glasses just like that. Mad scientist preferred must love cats. Barbara Crampton is Megan, Dan's girlfriend and daughter of the Dean. Ugh, never piss off the Dean. Have you not seen Animal House? Look who answered the ad. He had him at basement. I think this will be just fine. Shall I move in now? Here's the first month's rent. It was the 80s! 17 bucks went a lot further back then. Meanwhile, in brain surgery class, lesson one, make yourself a dandy wig. You take the bone saw. Bone saw is ready! I really did that joke twice, huh? Make a two-inch diameter hole? Okay, who wants to skull fuck the dead hobo first? Me, 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 me. During class, West can't help but antagonize Dr. Hill. Well, we've got a badass over here. West believes Dr. Hill stole credit for stuff from his friend? Mentor? The guy with the inside out skull. So he takes every shot he can. Perhaps it take. Oh, I'm sorry, did I break your concentration? Don't piss off the doctor, they can make your lives hell. Have you not seen Scrubs? To retain personalities of public afterlife. We all pray a mirror. Class dismissed. Looks like he's got his eye on the Dean's daughter, too. Ew. Your daughter is seeing Kane, eh? I'll, I'll have her home soon, don't worry. Trust me, we'll be back in an hour. Oof! I got something you can reanimate. West is making Megan uncomfortable without even being there. Oh, and the cat's missing. Megan is spooked by West, but not enough to stay the fuck out of his room. In the fridge, she finds Mountain Dew and one cool cat. 
What are you doing on my robe? <laughs> it was dead when I found it. A likely story. But later that night, something wakes up Dan and he goes to investigate. Remember this Easter egg for later. And then he transforms into the boulder from Raiders. Jesus, God, help me, Lord Jesus, help me. I'm falling out of steps, oh Lord Jesus Christ, please. <laughs> he finds West fighting a zop. Zombie ass. <laughs> okay, guys, in this scene, your motivation is to destroy the set. Turns out Dan's dead cat wasn't as dead as initially thought, at least at first. But he's dead again. So what, seven lives to go? West lets Dan in on what he's been working on a serum that brings dead things back to life. We can defeat death. Hell, if Bill and Ted can do it, they got this. Skeptical, Dan needs a demonstration. Now this is how you do the do. I don't know what they were expecting, but okay, that would have been cool. <coughs> Megan barges in at the worst times, doesn't she? She needs her own sitcom. Oh, it's him! Dan tries going to the Dean with what he's learned about Herbert West. He doesn't believe him and seems more interested in Dan banging his daughter. He kicks West out of school, without cause from what I can see, and he's an absolute dick about it. Back to the morgue where Dan still has access to the good stuff. Oh boy, time for shenanigans! They just need the perfect corpse. This one's too hot, this one's too cold, this one's just right. He's perfect. Only dead a few hours, no bodily damage, and circumcised. Stabby stabby. Okay, it doesn't seem to be working. Plan B. Have you seen Weekend at Bernie's? Yeah! The dead walk and they have no modesty. The Dean knows Dan is up to no good. And they're on a collision course with hilarity. Ooh, pancaked. All right, that stomp was a bit excessive. Okay, Dean, you got this. Expel him. That'll show him. Wes takes out the zombie, but it's too late for the Dean. We can't let him go to waste now, can we? We can bring him back to life. He's fresher, so maybe it'll yield better results? I somehow doubt that. You You know what this needs? Megan to barge in. There she is! No! Oh, this needs some splaining! What the hell happened here? Dan, you alright? Dan also! Good enough for me. No. Don't worry, little trooper. Herbert's got you. The Dean is under observation just in case something weird happens. I'm here to help your father by firing a high-powered laser into his brain. Sign a release so that I can perform exploratory surgery. Gotta cut something. Too late for this guy, but your dad I can help. I want you to think of me as someone you can come to with your problems. Not creepy enough? Try this. Or if you're ever lonely. I see we have your father's blessing. Dinner at 8? Looking for answers, Megan doesn't like the one she gets. He's dead. Should've just lied, man. Never piss off your woman. Have you not seen the burning bed? Dr. Hill pays a visit to our young genius. Oh, he believes him now, but this ain't a collab. Hill tries to blackmail Wes into giving him the secret of reanimation so he can claim it as his own. Oh, stop pretending to understand it. The secret ingredient is antifreeze? Wes gives Dr. Hill the full scoop. I can dig it. Here, just the right height to kiss my ass. Then shove a beer can up there, then into the oven at 375 for four hours. It can't get any fresher than this, and with no pissed off body to thrash around. Why are you doing the body? What are you thinking? How am I talking without my lungs? You dick. I told you not to do the body. <coughs> While going through Dr. Hill's office, Dan finds out he's got a bit of a crush. Why are these pages stuck together? Oh my god. Hill's been busy, lobotomizing patients without consent and stealing secret formulas. Hill took my serum, my notes. Yeah. I had to kill him. He's dead? Mmm, kinda. How many times have I told you stop killing and reanimating evil creepy doctors, you sick little monkey? <laughs> Rough weekend, huh? Hill is still able to control his body through... Wi-Fi? I didn't say he controlled it well. Hill disguises himself as three grade schoolers in a trench coat. Later, he'll sneak into an R-rated movie. Time to spank it. Quit pulling my hair. Mom! He's got the do and a ton of corpses. Time to liven this place up. Our lovebirds make up, but this time dad bursts in. Hands off my daughter. 
Dr. Hill is able to telepathically control people or corpses he's lobotomized. Why again? Yay science? Hi! Come here often! I found my thrill on Dr. Hill! Alright, now this is just getting weird. <coughs> In Russia, head give you! Ow! Our heroes are here to save the day, and David Gale's wife files for divorce. Google it, she seriously got pissed off by this scene. Allegedly. You'll never get credit for my discovery. Who's going to believe a talking head? Remember this earlier Easter egg? Stop Making Sense was an album in the 80s by a band called Talking Heads. I'm Casey Kasem. Three of us, one and a half of them. I like these odds. Oh shit, they're suddenly outnumbered. <laughs> Megan gets through to Zombie Dad. What's the matter, Bumpkin? Nothing more fierce than a zombie dad protecting his child. It's beautiful. While Hid's head is turned into a drippy stress ball, West gives his body an overdose. An overdue, if you will. Hill's head is history, but his body is still fighting. He should have quit while he was... That's cheap, even for me. West doesn't make it out, but his remaining research and formula live on. One last zombie. My hero! Where are you going? <laughs> Some awkward chopping doesn't save Megan. The good news? They're already in a hospital. The bad news? Not a great hospital. But you can see where this is going. Really? After all this, after this, 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 and this, you're gonna do this? Alright. Does it work? Kinda. <laughs> that was H.P. Lovecraft's Reanimator. A modern, for the 80s, take on Frankenstein, mad scientists obsessed with bringing dead things back to life. Rather than a bleak, somber morality tale, Reanimator is a more fun, over-the-top romp takes everything to the extreme. The cat scene is hysterical. I'm sorry, but it is. Jeffrey Combs is perfectly cast. Arrogant, brilliant, eccentric, legend. Unfortunately, he overshadows just about everyone else, including the other lead, Bruce Abbott. Abbott isn't bad, he's just not Jeffrey Combs. His relationship with Megan seems to be a setup for a bunch of punchlines. When you have gross, oozy zombies around, you need a villain even slimier. Even before this happens to him, it shows just how monstrous he is. So weird. And what's the deal with this guy? Seriously. The soundtrack reminds me a lot of Hitchcock movies, like Psycho. It's fitting, kinda groovy, derivative, but it keeps things from feeling too heavy. From the opening scene, the tone is set. Bring a sponge. It's a low-budget movie, and it shows in spots, but they splurged on the visual effects. 24 gallons of fake blood, priceless. Dr. Hill being able to control minds was cut from the final film, but they left in where he controlled the zombies. They never established that ability, so this literally came out of thin air. It always bugged me. Just under 90 minutes, it moves along quickly, it's never boring, it never feels padded for the sake of runtime. Reanimator is 4 Bs. It's bloody, violent, and absurd. And it's a ton of gooey fun. Thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, comment the bell, you know the usual YouTube stuff. This is the newbie, and I'll see you later, kids. Toodles!